gamers today we are going to be doing an hre guide this is a fresh out of the oven game i've played i'm the spirit lord versus flash he is rank i don't know 10 in the world 12 in the world 13 on the ladder something like that and i will be showing you a different build so but kind of the same but kind of different so in season one i showed you guys how to rush castle in season two I don't remember, I might have just done the update to the original build, I actually can't remember. And then in Season 3, AK, now we are going to be doing 2TC HRE, and this is a build that I've been doing quite a lot and that I've been loving quite a bit. So I'm going to teach you how to do it and hopefully get those HRE wins. So let's get going. So. You will start with, uh, you know, you kill six on sheep, then you're going to take three, drop off the food, and then go to gold. You're going to make a mining camp, and you're going to make a house. Um, you're going to start scouting, make sure you have enough sheep, and you want to position your sheep wherever you're going to be placing the chapel. So I don't want to be killing the sheep here if I'm going to place the chapel on this side. I want to already position it so it's on that side. Now... If this thing wasn't here, I would probably put my chapel here, so it covers the wood, it's in the back, and it has the gold. But, because there's this weird-ass market, trade post, I'm gonna put a chapel here, which is also a pretty good spot. It is a little bit exposed, but it worked out fine. Uh, if you wanna know about more, if you wanna know more about the chapel positioning and stuff, you can check out my uh, season one guide. Uh, I talk about it quite a bit. But obviously, if you're going to TC, this changes quite a bit on your priorities. And having stone plus wood is a pretty good deal. So if you had like gold in the front and stone wood in the back, I would 100% go for the stone wood. Uh, getting reg getting um, chapel on your gold is yeah. not that important, okay? Um, I would prefer to have like wood, stone, berries than wood, gold. And preferably you want to have it in the back, especially, especially, especially against aggressive civs. Like, do not put your chapel here if you're playing against French or English. You have to put it in the back or the side. This game I played against China, which usually goes for a boob or a barbican rush. So I felt fine just putting the chapel here because I got the triple resource value. So, you can see the worker split in the top left if you're curious about that. And the moment I have 200 gold, I'm going to be aging up with that juicy chapel. And this chapel covers the gold, it covers the stone, it covers the wood, and it covers the sheep. Whenever you make the chapel, make sure there are two farm spaces or one full farm space in between. So, four tiles. So this is a tile 1, tile 2, tile 3, tile 4. Don't make chapel next to your TC and don't make chapel without space to put at least one or two farms in between. So, uh, this is something that's very, very common. And as you can see, I'm aging up with nine workers. Uh, do you really need the lumber camp? Yes, I do. That is three tiles away. See, one tile, two tiles, three tiles. That's pretty far. So, why am I aging up with nine? Because this prelate can only support eight uh, workers. So what I want to do is age up as fast as I can so I can get the prelate in the chapel and make sure I get the most out of my inspiring. Now, if I have a perfect positioning for this, so this is something that you're gonna have to get a feel for or watch more of my games uh, on Twitch. But in this situation, the reason why I'm edging up with nine is because I can put a prelate inside and I can instantly chop wood what? and get stone and get food and they're all going to be inspired. So you get really good value. If I only had one resource, you wouldn't need to necessarily rush chapel. You could just build it with less workers, but that is the reasoning behind it. If you have inspired uh, villagers gathering food, you only need three villagers and food to constantly produce villagers instead of four. So I inspire these two. And the reason why I'm mining uh, wood with these three is because I need 50 wood so I can build a mining camp. So because this is a 2TC build, you can see my age up finishes at about 320, 330 is a normal time if you're doing this kind of build. The prelate goes inside and look at that coverage. I got the gold, I got the stone, 
Uh, I got the wood and I got the TC berries. That's a 10 right there. That's a 10. That's a really good chapel. So I'm going to build a mining camp with six workers. And then I'm going to have six plus rallied workers on wood. Up until about eight workers on wood this morning part. Making a house. And now I'm going to start rallying onto the food because I need food for double TC. And slowly we're going to, you know, work towards the castle or making units or whatever else. So as my eco goes up, you can see the TC will be ready soon. I'm scouting the other side to see what my opponent is doing. I see no aggression, so no reason to make any units. Again, just like with any guide, if I saw French and he's making knights, I would make spearmen. I would make barracks and then spearmen. Uh, if I played against English, maybe I would open up with stables or, you know, you gotta adjust based on what you see. So I'm not gonna cover every single matchup, but you know, if you see a French knight, if you see French, you gotta make spears, right? Otherwise your TC is gonna get denied. If you're playing against English, you either have to rush out of TC super fast and then camp with towers or make units and fight. Um, so yeah. So right now I got 350 stone, 361, and the chapel positioning can work really well with the TC. So this is something I like to do. What you can also do, or what I could have done, is I could have done for a TC on the deer pack here to get that extra food. But what I like to do is cover my gold with TC and then just make farms for food and um, not have to go out on the map to get food. So I'm just go going to completely ignore these food sources for the most part and not expose my workers to any kind of harassment. So the best place to place a TC in this case is gonna be right here in gold. So what's that gonna do? It's going to protect my wood line. So even if opponent attacks from this side, I can just rotate workers here and I can protect my gold so I can rush castle with minimum amount of units. Amazing. I'm gonna age up with eight and then I'm going to put six on gold and I'm gonna have eight on wood total. The reason why you want eight on wood is you want to be able to produce production buildings if you need them or continuously produce farms as I'm doing right now. So I'm scouting still and I'm about to see that he is... I like has a low amount of workers. Maybe I'm crazy. Oh, he has 26. Never mind. Um, so what I'm going to do right now... Where are his workers? Oh, they're here. Okay. I was like, where are his workers? Because I'm not seeing any, but they're all here. Um, so I scatter the stables. So what do I do? I make a barracks, right? Makes sense. You scout what a pun is making. You make a building that counters it. So my goal is to rush castle after this. And if you're, let's say I was running out of food completely, maybe I would put two extra villagers of wood so I can make more farms. So this is something that you have to figure out based on how much food you had. In this game, I actually have more sheep coming, so I have really good sheep amounts. So I can just get away with eight on wood, slowly produce a farm here and there, produce production buildings, and so on and so forth. And I would never suggest like abandoning all the unit production, all the upgrades and rushing castle as fast as you can, because that's not really the meta anymore. Uh, you wanna enter castle comfortably. So what I mean by that is you wanna enter castle where there's no units like killing your workers, there's no units surrounding your base and stuff like that. You wanna enter castle and if you're being uh, attacked, right, you wanna have enough units to push back the enemy, start making castle units and then slowly take the relics. So don't go like zero units, just all on food and gold and go castle because then you can't get anything anyway. So what's the point, right? So what I'm gonna do right now is get a mill and I'm gonna start some of my eco upgrades because my chapel is very good, it's, on, it's covering the gold. So I'm gonna have a bunch of gold income. So I'm gonna start a horticulture. This is for sheep and farms, so it's very nice. And I think I start a uh, double broad axe and specialized pig as well. So he has horsemen now, but there is nowhere to harass and this is because I built a PC on gold. He can't harass the gold, he can't harass the wood line, he can't harass the food, so he's just running around doing nothing pretty much at this point. Uh, there you go, I'm getting all the eco upgrades and I'm just slowly moving onto the, onto the castle. 
still produce a couple of spearmen. I'm gonna get wheelbarrow as well because I got horticulture upgraded. So economically right now he has these two upgrades. Kind of surprising that he didn't get these two, but okay, interesting. Uh, and uh, yeah, as you can see, I got eight of wood still, and I'm just using those to produce houses, to produce farms, to use them for upgrades. And what I did, I wasn't sure what he was doing, by the way. He was doing 1TC China with Song, and he went like a couple of units into Fast Castle. And I saw that he has Archer Ranger earlier, so I was like, oh, maybe he's going to put some pressure, and I didn't want to lose out on food income here. So what I did is I made one tower, and when I saw I'll have enough time, I got some stone, and I got Springle upgrade, which basically solidified my position here completely. The Springle tower is range like, like this. Uh... So he can't really attack anywhere on this side. Got the TC here, TC here. So I'm good to go. Um, there's the chapel. So you start chapel about 8 at 53. You can get faster chapel start, like maybe 820 or something. But like I said, not much of a point if your opponent is killing or harassing you. Because you can already build men at arms and horsemen and feudal. So if you're getting a lot of aggression on you there's uh nothing wrong with fighting in feudal so that's something i want to discuss back in the day you know six months ago atri playing in feudal was terrible because atri in feudal was uh not great and obviously people were worse and yada yada but these days if i played against french um i would not just rush castle i would just fight french in feudal because what you can do is you can go like spearman horseman you can put, instead of having this many on gold, because you're not rushing castle, I would put 3 on gold, and I would put like 10, 15 on wood, so I can make production buildings, and I would just have like 20 farms around my chapel. And with 20 farms, you will simply be able to outmass the French completely. And there will come a point where I'm under my TC, where I'm getting all the food, but the French player would need to go like on these deer and these berries, and that's when you can start harassing him. So HRA is pretty good in feudal if you have to fight in it. Uh, HRA against English, same thing. If English is attacking you with spearman longbow, just go like um, you can go man at arm horseman or something like that uh, to deal with it. You can also go horseman uh, archer. That's up to you. My point is, if you're playing against super aggressive civs, don't be afraid to just. Continuously produce farm so you don't run out of food and then just fight in feudal. Um, all right, so with the age up, he's going up right now. I'm making a couple of stables because I want to go into knights. Instantly producing prelates because I'm going to start getting relics. And because he was still in feudal and I'm on 2 TC, I, know, I knew that he was on 1 TC because I scouted. I walled off my sides here just to make sure I don't take any damage unnecessary because I felt I was in a pretty good position already. Equal count with China is a very good position because I also have the chapel. And I'm going to start running out of food here. So because I have the map control, I have spears, he only has horsemen. Because I have the map control, by the way, I don't know what happened here, but I didn't make these for a long time. So yeah, no idea what happened there. I guess I messed up. Because I have the map control, I'm going to take this food right here and then I'm going to move on to the deer in a little bit because I know that he can't really uh, do any harassment. And now I'm just slowly picking up the relics around the map. Next relic I'm going to go for is this one. So what I do is I send a couple of spearmen there uh, with the prelates to cover in case there's horsemen. So I'm just kind of securing the, the relics for myself and escorting my prelates. Uh, I got one relic right now. Picking up the second one. I'm gonna go for the middle one, but he actually covered that one. I'm out of my units, so I lose the relic. Knight comes up. And the first thing, if you're not under heavy pressure, as a tree that you want to do, just be aggressive with your first couple of knights. Because obviously, if I'm, I was getting heavily attacked, I would just defend with like men at arm knights or, or spearmen knights. But because there's no pressure on me, I went to clean this up and then I went to try to go around here and, and kind of harass his food lines a little bit. So 
I got to sprinkle the upgrade on this tower. I think I'm gonna put this relic into this tower. He was trying to deny me relics by taking them, but I managed to deny this one. I take it. That's mine. Uh, I take the right side relic as well because I'm putting pressure on the front so he's not as focused. And he's already investing like a lot of. Uh, expensive units with these knights trying to deny the relics. So the situation is pretty pretty good for me. Third relic coming back and fourth is super super close to the middle as well. So what is the plan right now and when to go Swabia? That's a question I get very often when I play a Um It's pretty much the like feudal. You should look at castle like feudal. Uh, did you get some kind of advantage versus your opponent? Then you have two options. You can either attack and try to end the game by making more production buildings, or you can just go Swabia and then increase your lead. If you're comfortable in the late game, you can go Swabia and increase your lead and kind of, you know, aim for the long game. If you want to end the game, you can do that right now. You can just mass units because these farms are really, really good already, and they provide you pretty much all the food that you need, and you can obviously increase the count. Um, but if you're playing, like, the question is, like, if you're maybe not having the map control, or if you're not ahead, when do you decide to go Swabia? The easiest answer might be a stupid one, but it's when you know you can die, right? So, if opponent has 50 units here and you got 10, can you go Palace to Swabia? No, you're gonna die. If the opponent has... 20 knights and you got 50 knights and three spears can you go sabia yeah you can right because you're not going to die even if he has a couple of more knights over you you're going to be fine so that's something that you're going to have to get a feel for and you know this is something that comes with a lot of experience um it's not something that you can learn overnight it's something that you need to play a lot of games and kind of get a feel for when you're safe and when you're not so in this specific game, I am massing units because I want to take the relics. So we're both just massing units and producing because we're fighting over the last relic. And I got three stables, two bearers up right now. I go for a little counterattack here, but my tower sees that he's picking up a relic. So what I do instead... Oh yeah, I had a knight here harassing. Like I said, look at one knight how much damage it does. We get that. Boom. The barrel of fish down, couple of workers. He picks up the relic, and I notice that the army is not following the monk, so I just snap his neck real quick. And now I can engage and maybe clean that up and pick up the relics for myself. And that is the fourth relic. He's trying to harass me long. I deny it. I got 32 food, and this was the position where. I was producing units still, by the way. I wasn't like cheaping out on units. You can see that uh, if we select my production buildings, I'm still producing, and that's because my economy is really good. And I had a lot of workers in deer that I moved down to the gold. Um, so even though I was producing workers, I still had uh, plenty of income to go to Swabia. Now I felt at a pretty good position. I lost this little tiny army, but this is not enough for him to push and you know win the game off of it. So I felt pretty confident going to Swabia and kind of increasing my lead. Meanwhile, I was getting upgrades with Blacksmith. And uh, yeah, there's the fourth relic. Feeling pretty good. And the next move that I like to do is once I go for... Uh, once I get to Imperial with this kind of good economy, I like to get a lot of stone and start kind of sectioning off maps with stone walls. Or putting keeps on the big golds and kind of starting to play that, uh, that resource kind of game where you're trying to outmine your opponent in the map. And HRE is not uh, a very efficient sieve in terms of army trading. So as HRE, you're supposed to overwhelm your opponent with units. You're not supposed to... Uh, you can, but you're not supposed to make hand cannoneers and slow siege pushes and stuff like that. You're supposed to go, as I like to call it, full baboon, which is mass barracks, Spearmen, men at arm, horsemen, knights, and just go. So here he goes for some kind of push because he has to do something. Because obviously it's Imperial versus Castle, I have more workers in him. 
so he goes for a push. I get a thick surround right here. Mop up his army. And <coughs> this is the point with this many farms. 41 farms. By the way, I like to go about 55, 60 farms as HRE around the chapel. And this is the point where I don't need to trade efficiently. I just need to trade. So even if I trade two units for one, with this kind of economy, it's more than fine for me. Because he doesn't have that many farms set up. He has like maybe 10, 15 farms, which is not enough. He doesn't have stone walls around his base. So as long as I'm being active right now and I force fights, I'm in good position. So if you look here, he's cutting me with crossbows. He's killing good amount of units. But the numbers, the numbers don't lie. I break the walls on this side. Again, he's killing units here, but it doesn't matter. I'll break through. Harass that side. I'm harassing this side. And you can see the reinforcements are constantly streaming in. Meanwhile, I section off some of the horsemen to harass. And I'm not even paying attention to these units, by the way. Like, these units are A-moved. These units are shift queued into the food line. These units are A-moved in the front. And it kind of becomes a little bit too much for your opponent to handle. But in general, HRE is played two ways. Either where you get to Imperial super quick and you just overwhelm your opponent with, um, as they're called, trash units, the units that cost only wood and food, which is horsemen and spearmen. Or you can stay in castle longer and go for knight plus men at arm plus land shits, right? Which is very gold heavy. So you have like a big strong ball of units that can go together or can harass individually. That's up to you. Both playstyles work just fine. And I also use both of you know the playstyles depending on the map, what I want to do and how I like to play. But um, that's pretty much it. So now, uh, when do you add farms? You add farms over time. You're always going to want to have... Uh, you always want to have... Uh, workers on wood like 8 to 10 in the early game so you're just gonna produce farms with any excess wood that you have that you don't use on production buildings um and for the people i see that someone asked in the chat what is the main difference between one and two tc one tc allows you for a faster castle rush with worse economy um two tc allows you to what this is like you're on a timer if you don't get all the relics or you don't do some kind of damage with your knights your economy is very slowly growing but with 2 tc you have to obviously you have double the villager production but you can also use that tc defensively to cover your resources um you do get castle a little bit later but the benefit of it is that you can have way stronger economy going into castle so in hre mirror i would not advise you to go to tc in hre mirror one tc is the best because it's all about whoever gets to castle first and takes the relics um if you get tower rushed or something maybe you cannot get the stone you can go one tc castle but even against mongols two tc is great because with this build you age up what was it like 330 so you can just make archers and deny the tower rush um so there are some matchups where you can go 1TC, but I, in general, I think 2TC is really, really good. And um, it's probably my favorite way to play HRE right now. And I would advise you guys, you know, don't go 2TC into Castle always. Try going 2TC into just Mass Fetal Fight against French or English. Um, it's pretty good. It works. So why not? Can HRE do early push out? Yes, you can. I've killed plenty of people with just rams with HRE and feudal. Because again, the other civs, the advantage of HRE compared to the other civs, except English, because they can also go super early farms, is that if you fight in feudal and you trade, you trade, you trade, they will reach a point where they have to go on the map to get the deer and the berries, and you don't. And that's where your strength is, because you can just push them off of the food sources and they got no units. So. Yeah. Anyway, if you're watching this on YouTube, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the guide. More guides are yet to come uh, for the other seven sieves. Some of them will just be updated versions. I think one that comes to mind is, is Abbasid. 
there's not going to be a lot of updates for the Avocet guide because nothing has changed around Avocet. The TC costs a little bit more uh, and it takes longer to build, but the Avocet style is more or less the same. But some of the other sieves, I will teach you some uh, other builds. Because I showed you guys with Mongols how to um, rush castle, I showed you, I think, two variations of it. What I'm going to be teaching you with Mongols is town center rush. I'm not kidding. Anyway, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you're watching on Twitch, let's keep going.